This is a god roll, a weapon with the best perks possible, but some weapons can actually get super god rolls. Certain weapons can get double perks, which means you'll have an easier time getting the god roll, and you have a chance of getting the god roll with extra perks that are amazing too. Perks that you can swap to depending on the situation. This could be a weapon with PvE and PvP god rolls, or multiple PvE god rolls, or anything in between. I'm Marshix, and one way you can get super god rolls is through vendor rank ups. As you play Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit, you'll eventually rank up and reset your rank. Whenever you do reset your rank, every weapon you earn from that vendor will have a chance to have an additional perk. One additional perk is already nice, but it gets even better. This doesn't stop at one reset. Every reset increases the amount of additional perks you can get. So with two resets, you can get up to four main perks, three resets can get up to five main perks, and four resets can get up to six main perks. Yes, it takes a long time to get that many resets, but if you do, you can get so many different combinations. Now of these weapons, which ones are worth going for? Starting with Crucible, all of these weapons can get extra perks. Of these weapons, Unending Tempest is an S tier SMG with things like Demolitionist, Subsistence, Adrenaline Junkie, Headstone, Frenzy, and a bunch of other perks. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to go over what I think is the PvE Super God roll. You'll definitely want Demolitionist plus Adrenaline Junkie so you can get grenades back quickly and then use those grenades for a damage buff. Then on top of that, Headstone as an optional perk to create stasis crystals, which is very strong in most stasis builds. This way, you can have Demolitionist and Headstone for an Osmiomancy build, and Demolitionist plus Adrenaline Junkie for any other grenade-focused build. Then of course, any other perks that you like, or any PvP perks, would be a welcome addition. Riptide is also an awesome weapon worth grinding for. It's the best stasis fusion rifle, and it can get really insane with multiple perks. So for this, you'll definitely want Auto Loading Holster and Chill Clip so you can freeze enemies and then never have to worry about reloading. That's the role everyone uses, but if you're lucky enough to get lead from gold, it gets even better. This makes it so you have the base roll most of the time, but if you ever run out of ammo, just dug into cover, swap out the perks, and now you can get special ammo from Heavy Bricks. Then when ammo's not a problem anymore, just swap back to Auto Loading for your original roll. Then if you want to take it a step further, this is completely unnecessary, but you could also go with a damage perk in the final column, if you ever find yourself needing to DPS with your fusion. As for the other weapons, none of them really stand out to me for PvE, and I hate Crucible, so I'm not the guy to listen to for PvP. The Drifter also has access to super god rolls after you rank him up, but I'll be honest, I'd rather skydive without a parachute than play Gambit for 10 minutes. All of these weapons can get extra perks, but the only one kinda worth grinding for is Breakneck. Even then, it's still not better than most auto rifles. But if you must know, I would go with Subsistence and Onslaught to get increased fire rate and keep it going for longer. Then you could throw on Demolitionist if you like grenades or grenade builds, or Kinetic Trimmers for more damage against chunkier targets. Like I said, it's not amazing, but it's something to look out for if you're the one guy still playing Gambit. For Vanguard, all of these weapons can get multiple perks, but in two different ways. Let's talk about the first set of weapons. These are exactly the same as Crucible and Gambit. Reset your rank, and you'll have a chance to get more perks. Now, of these weapons, three of them are good. First is Prolonged Engagement. This is a stasis version of Recluse or Funnel Web, and because of that, it gets Headstone. Once again, this is great for pretty much any stasis build. Then you can pair this with Subsistence to reload less often, and this actually works with Headstone to reload itself from Stasis Crystal Explosions. Then for builds where Stasis Crystals don't really matter, you can swap this out for a damage perk like Target Lock, Surrounded, Frenzy, One For All, or Multi-Kill Clip. Whatever you like the most. Strident Whistle is another weapon worth looking at because it gets the bow perk, Archer's Tempo. This reduces draw time with precision hits, so it essentially fires faster. This is basically a must-have on every bow. Then, on top of that, it gets Incandescent for both Add Clear and Synergy with Solar Subclasses. This is great, but you don't really need Incandescent for high-level activities, Instead, you'll probably want more damage, and for that, you can also get Vorpal Weapon. So, no matter the content, you'll be able to use this in any activity. The third weapon from this list is Fortissimo. I know, kind of a weird option, but hear me out. The Double Slug Shotgun meta will inevitably return, and when it does, this is one of the best kinetic options. It gets 4th times the charm, so you can shoot a ton of shots without reloading. It gets Vorpal Weapon for a passive 15% damage buff against bosses. And for the super god roll, 
Surrounded for a 40% damage buff whenever you're close to three or more enemies. With this, you can DPS most bosses with Vorpal, but in the few encounters where you can actually use Surrounded, you can swap to it and deal significantly more damage. I had this super god roll on an old first and last out, and it was always nice to have that option to swap between. Unfortunately, this weapon does not exist anymore, so I'm one of only a handful of people who still have this super god roll. Now for the other vanguard weapons, those are a little bit different. These can only get additional perks if they drop as adept versions, meaning you must do Grandmaster Nightfalls and just get lucky. These will drop with one additional perk in the third column, so the potential isn't as high as some other weapons, but most of these weapons are way better overall, so it's fine. All of these weapons are great, but only four of them really benefit from double perks. The first is Break Tech Osprey. This rocket launcher gets all of these perks, but the rules you're looking for are Envious Assassin plus Lasting Impression, with your additional perk being Auto Loading Holster. This makes it so you can load three rockets before a boss fight, then swap to Auto Loading Holster and keep the three rockets. Then you shoot your rocket three times going into a boss fight, swap to your special weapon for DPS while your rocket will reload itself, then swap back and fire again. And of course, we have Lasting Impression because this is the highest damage buff on this weapon without having to jump through a bunch of hoops. Undercurrent. This is a waveframe grenade launcher with Vault Shot, so it's amazing at ad clear. This also gets Ambitious Assassin to get two shots at a time. And just like the Riptide roll from earlier, you can also get Lead from Gold, allowing you to swap perks on the fly to get easy ammo drops, which is nice because this burns through a lot of ammo. Uzume is a crappy sniper rifle, However, it does get a really interesting super god roll. Most PvE players will want a pended or extended mag to hold more ammo, fourth times the charm to get two extra shots from thin air for a total of seven, and Vorpal weapon for more damage to bosses. But it can also get clown cartridge. This will make it overfill the magazine whenever you reload, allowing you to get up to eight shots in the mag. Then you can swap to fourth times, keeping the eight, and instead of seven shots, you get up to 14 shots without reloading six of which are completely free since they spawn out of thin air. Precision Instrument is also a really good option, but only if you never miss a headshot. So it's up to you which damage perk you like. The Slammer is a brand new sword that doesn't release until Tuesday, but we can see the rolls in the database right now, and man is it good. This is a stasis vortex frame sword, just like everyone's favorite Fallen Guillotine, but unlike Fallen Guillotine, this gets a bunch of perks that make me rock hard, like Eager Edge. This has only been available on the two Halo Swords, and if you've never seen this in action, Eager Edge allows you to move around the map extremely fast, and you can do some weird tricks to do stuff like this. But this sword is not just for cool movement tech. It also gets access to two really strong damage perks. Bait and Switch for a 30% damage buff, one of the highest in the game even after the nerf, and this is the first sword to ever get Bait and Switch, or Cold Steel to slow and freeze enemies with every hit. This can be used for a variety of stasis builds, and it increases your damage since every few hits you'll be freezing and then subsequently shattering them for a burst of damage. Unfortunately, you can't get both of these perks at the same time, but you can get another perk that increases your total damage by a lot. Since Eager Edge isn't really useful in boss fights, you won't have a hard time swapping it out from time to time. And the best perk to swap to during boss fights is going to be Relentless Strikes. This refunds ammo after three hits, so with long damage phases, this will allow you to attack a lot more, increasing your total damage significantly. This sword has it all, fast movement tech, ammo generation, and high damage output, or fast movement tech, ammo generation, and stasis synergy. If you're gonna farm for any nightfall super god roll, this is the weapon to grind for, and you want either one of these rolls. Holiday events also have the potential to drop super god rolls, during the dawning, you can get vendor upgrades from Eva Levante that make your weapons drop with additional perks in each column for a total of four main perks. And this is for any dawning weapon. Guardian Games also has this, but they're a lot more limited. The masterworked weapons you get by lighting the final torches have double perks. So in total, I think you get around 12 for the entire event. Why we can't just grind for these, I don't know. And as for the other events, I don't think they drop with any extra perks, but I could be wrong. Let me know in the comments if you remember, or if you work at Bungie and want to leak some upcoming events. And while you're down there, like the video for good luck on your super god rolls. You can also get super god rolls of trials weapons, specifically adept trials weapons. 
It doesn't matter if you get them from the lighthouse, or if they drop from the end of a match, or if you buy them from Saint-14. All Adept Trials weapons get one additional perk in the final column, you know, where all the good perks are. So all of the current Trials weapons will eventually get access to Super God Rolls. Now of these weapons, there are two of them that I would sell a kidney for. Summoner is a Solar Auto Rifle that's crazy in both PvE and PvP, getting access to Subsistence or Overflow alongside Incandescent and Onslaught. Incandescent for solar builds, Onslaught for faster fire rate, and therefore more fun. This is the role I want, but you could also go with Rampage or Target Lock for actual damage buffs. Honestly, I would be happy with any combination of those perks. The Prophet is another really good weapon for this set, getting access to the Demolitionist plus Headstone roll mentioned before on Unending Tempest, and Headstone can be swapped out for a damage perk whenever you aren't running Stasis, or whenever you want to take this into a GM. Now, for those damage perks, you can go with Explosive Payload, Kill Clip, or Precision Instrument. All of these are great options, but I prefer Explosive Payload because it's essentially a passive damage buff. You don't have to do anything special to use it, and since it splits the damage between impact and explosion, you never have damage fall off from the explosion portion. So you can use this more effectively from far away, and this is great because typically you want to keep your distance in GMs so you don't die. Unless you're a Titan, in which case you're probably in the middle of all the action and doing perfectly fine. Besides that, every other Trials weapon I either wouldn't use in PvE, or it doesn't have a very appealing Super God role for PvE. That's not to say multiple perks on a PvP role would be good, but once again, I am not a PvP guy, go ask someone else. But it doesn't stop at Trials. Some raid weapons can also get Super God rolls. I say some because only three raids have this feature and only some of those weapons are actually worth it. First is Vault of Glass. Time lost weapons from Master Challenges get double perks in both columns. The secondary set of perks are always a set roll, but weapons like Fatebringer benefit from that greatly. Fatebringer can get all of these perks and it's guaranteed to always have Explosive Payload and Firefly as the alternate perks. These are the perks most people want for it anyway, so you'll just have to grind for the additional perks, like Thresh and Frenzy. Thresh makes Fatebringer way better when paired with Celestial Nighthawk, since both of them generate super energy on kills, which means you can get your supers back in about 30 seconds. Then, I said Frenzy because it's the easiest damage perk to use, but it can also get Kill Clip or Adrenaline Junkie, whatever damage perk you want. Honestly, none of the other weapons really stand out from this raid, so let's move on to the second raid. King's Fall. All of the harrowed weapons from King's Fall, aka adept weapons, are able to get double perks. And while I could go over all the best weapons from this raid, you can craft the entire set, and the crafted weapons are just strictly better since they have enhanced perks. There's no real reason to grind for these when you can get the guaranteed perks you want with enhanced versions that are just better in every way. I guess the only downside is the adept mods, but like you're not really using that on every weapon. So it doesn't really matter. Same thing with the Vow of the Disciple. You can grind for super god roll adept weapons, but they aren't going to outperform the crafted versions because of the enhanced perks. But if you are crazy enough to grind for them, go for it. Now, the easiest source of super god rolls is surprisingly lost sectors, specifically master lost sectors. These drop one guaranteed world drop weapon with an additional perk in either column. Some of these weapons are surprisingly good, and you can see everything about them in this video. Thank you all so much for watching, I'm Marshix, and I'll see you next time.